Hey guys, welcome to Sop Mix Studio Um Biamas, conectando a Ruba com o mundo via video podcasting. Conectar com nós, compartilhar ideias na história para nos inspirar e papel com a Abri. Sop Mix Studio é plataforma de podcast na Ruba. Follow-nos no Facebook, subscribe no YouTube, offre uma plataforma de podcast preferida. Escute o podcast preferido, que hora e onde está. Sop Mix Studio, powered by. Credits, botou ideia? Credits educado e prepara a abo para vir um empresário exitoso. De business plan, guia personal e préstamo para negócio até com 100 mil florins. Vira para mais doido com Credits. Sopway, passa na Sopway para o Sop, Salada, Wrap ou Flatbread e mais fresco. Com cheta localidade Ronde Aruba, não está cerca de Ibo. Sopway. Swing Masters. Organizando eventos, conferências ou weddings. Mister de luz, som, staging, DJ, trozen ou flat screen. Swing Masters está claro para ser boa fiesta um éxito. Swing Masters. E a War, Sop e Make Studio e plataforma de podcast de Aruba está apresentada. Yo, you don't know. We going global with this thing. Boom. Top class. University, what a global opportunity. Hmm. Arugan University, take part, come join me. Together for the local experience. Spread the culture all over the nation. Let's build up the community. Learning and teaching in diversity. Hello, 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 and good afternoon. Good afternoon, Deborah. Good afternoon, Sharice. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I had an awesome day. Met some awesome people this week, and I'm energized. What yeah. about yourself? Trying to get there. Trying. But that's also part of the conversation today. Oh, well being. Welcome, welcome to another straight up conversation about education here on Soppy Mix, a program sponsored, powered by the University of Aruba. And who are we, Sharice? We are um, straight up conversation about about education with the intention to share island stories and also ask challenging questions so we can learn more about our health, in this case, our culture. And I am Sharice Hundeli, coordinator of the Offices of Student Face and Marketing. And who are you? I am Deborah Alexander, and I would like to focus on having our guests tell their educational trajectory to us because that's all part of lifelong learning finding those um, answers to the questions on what have you learned throughout your life so we are here with two beautiful ladies and yes, they are our afternoon. colleagues they are our colleagues i am going to introduce juliette chu say a shout out juliette Hi there, good afternoon, <laughs> good afternoon. Deborah and Sherry. <laughs> and we have Thais Frank. Hi, good afternoon, ladies. Happy to be here. Hi, happy to have you. And for all our viewers, welcome back, welcome back. Thanks for all the support and all the questions we have. And today, as we are going to be talking about health, mental health, or well being and culture, you can just drop us uh, any questions in the comments or you can WhatsApp us and we will get back to you because. It is important that you are part of this conversation because your opinion matters. Now, having said that, Deborah, what would you like? L- let us learn a bit about our guests. Yeah, let's learn a bit. I think I know them because I know Juliet and I have been working together for more than ele- well, about 11 years. Mm-hmm. Thais is a newbie to the university a few years, but I still... As active we've newbie. M- active with <laughs> Juliet as well because <laughs> we even found out something about her. She used to have her own show, but that's another thing we'll discuss. But I think I always like to be surprised by who our colleagues are because we work with them Monday to Friday, but have sometimes very little knowledge about who they truly are. Yes. So Thais Yes, let's start with who are you, what's your educational background, and what has your educational trajectory been that led to you sitting opposite us here? Okay, um, well, I studied OGM at the, at the university. I what's OGM? Organization, Governance and Management. Um, it's a four-year bachelor study at the University of Aruba. Um, I graduated in 2018, mm. so... Yeah, some years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Not, Not too long, long ago. ago. <laughs> I was just thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just about oh. four years ago. Yes. Really. And then I went to Maastricht, uh, where I did my master's in, in public policy and human development. 
Um, I did a double master's at the University of Maastricht and the United Nations University. Wow, very wow. impressive. <laughs> but you know, Deborah, I'm, you know, th the intention is that we really get to know each other. And Thais, I can remember it's now eight years mm -hmm. ago when you got to the university. And I would like you to share your first system because yes. I can still see your yeah. mom yeah. and yourself <laughs> standing there like, you what do I do? You did, you did help her. And I was yes. like, how can I do that? So could you just, because I think our listeners, our viewers mm -hmm. learn because when they see you and it's like wow double masters impressive yeah. but how did you get there well um i finished colegio um, i have a degree very young i was 17 um, i didn't want to continue very old so my mom told me well your only option at this point is the ua because i, I was still young so i i couldn't go to the netherlands um and i I didn't know what I wanted with life back then. We didn't have Afi, so yeah, I had a hard time. Year, yes, yeah. I had a hard time picking and choosing what I wanted with my life. I was in a student crisis back then, where I was contemplating what my future would be. I was one of those people that like everything. Like I saw myself as everyone, or as a doctor, as a nurse, as a management or manager. So I, I it was very hard for me to. to to pick and choose something or to find out what my passion really was in life. I started FAF. I remember... The Faculty um, of Finance the, the faculty and uh, of Accounting and Marketing. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, I started with a lot of... Um, yeah, uh, with a lot of enthusiasm to start my career and to learn. But slowly throughout the process, I kind of uh, realized that I wasn't really passionate about uh, the study. Um, I didn't see myself in, in the... In the actual study, seeing myself as an accountant or marketer. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, so I would say at the end of the year, I had like a breakdown where I was talking to my mom. I was like, I'm not happy. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what I want with my life. I'm doing this. I'm getting good grades, but I'm not really happy with the study. Um, and my mom was like, well, Thais, you have to figure this out because you're, you're young, but I mean, time is, is ticking, okay. right? So <laughs> wow. you have to soul search and see what you wanted. And it was um, that specific year that the OGM was closed. Um, and I went to OSA and I talked to Shaliz. Oh, Shaliz, I am not happy. I don't know what I want. FAF is not for me. I'm not... I, I'm learning a lot, but I'm not seeing myself in this program. I, I, I don't... Uh, feel a connection with the courses and the vision of what FAF stands for. Um, and Shalice talked to me and said, you know, um, the, the OGM is, is going to open again next year. Is there something more in your liking? And I, I talked to her a couple of times, I remember. Mm. Um, and then the hard moment came where I had to either yeah. do my final FAF exam to pass my first year or do the TOEFL. And I was already late for that test on Aruba, so I had to travel to Miami. Oh, and yeah, uh, those years wasn't easy. Yeah, yeah, it was hard. So oh. um, it was either do the TOEFL to get into OGM or do the exams to, to actually pass the first year of FAF. And I was in like, like, what do I do? What do I do? And then I, I told my mom, I'm going to Miami. I'm taking the TOEFL, I'm changing to OGM. And that was the best decision ever. Yeah. And I graduated in, in 2018. Um, Before you continue, thank mm -hmm. you for being so honest and sharing yeah, that. Yeah. Because, you know, many youngsters, they are mm -hmm. always in this phase. And, you know, and we're going to come back to yeah. Juliet about it. But remember to know for conversation, we all can ask okay. questions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh. yeah, that you shared this. Because at home, it is a difficult decision. When you're 16, 17, you're you're you kind of know and you kind of don't yeah. know what yeah. you want. But it's not only you know? a difficult um, decision for you. I also think it's for the parent. And I know, Juliet, that you have a daughter who had to go through choices and we'll mm -hmm. come back yeah. to that but from the parents perspective yeah, it was hard for her yeah. because yeah. she couldn't help me it wasn't yeah. her choice mm -hmm. she could give me a th uh, she could listen to me talk to me encourage me but at the end it was my decision yeah. um, but I'm very help or very happy and thankful for the support that I got throughout my journey that I had yeah. people to that I could talk to and give me advice um, and it was very difficult but I'm very happy that I I I I I dared to jump yeah. and go to Try Miami something. and just do yeah. the test and come back yeah. and get into And I would like to know because it's you talked about your educational trajectory, but let's go back even a bit further. Where did you go to Basel School? Just for Mont our audience. Mont Plaisir, Basel School. Mont Plaisir. Yeah. And yes, then Mont after Plaisir. the Mont Plaisir, to I went college. to Colegio. 
Um, yes, and then I, I uh, filled my last year. So I did my last year half of life twice, and that was my first setback because I was very young. I was like 15, 16, and nowhere um, ready to go abroad. So I got um, the feedback from my teachers, like, hey, just do it one more year. Like, you're so young, it won't even matter. Yeah. But that was a hard moment for me. How do I accept failure? How do I... Except my friends moving abroad and me staying back home alone. And we used this friends. word failure. I had this yeah. elaborate conversation with you have to go to Juliet, but where I was telling th- this person, he said, You know, I stayed back twice in mm-hmm. my uh, basis school. And I said, Well, it's not, he looked at it as a failure. And I said, It's just you were not ripe for the moment. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was not your moment. It was yeah. not your moment. You just were not ready and you mm-hmm. were not ripe. Mm-hmm. There's nothing to fail about it because it gave you an opportunity to mm-hmm. take. To mature in the process, exactly. yes. but so I think when you're in that spot, you, you don't you, you really you see, you don't it, see yeah. it. And when you're 16 and yeah. young, and your friends are leaving, you feel horrible. And um, but I think those uh, those moments in life really shape. Um, who, who I am now yeah. and made me very grateful for the things that I do have. Yeah. Now, just before we go to Julia, because we're so excited and also her perspective as a parent, because mm-hmm. a shout out to your mom, because I know she's <laughs> listening. <laughs> she's been so supportive and so open because yeah. I remember she would come in the office because like, Thais, abo mi You mm-hmm. got to know I'm just going to listen. And mm-hmm. as a parent, sometimes you have to be supportive by only listening and looking mm-hmm. at your child and help her just, mm-hmm. you know, creating yeah. this safe space. So mm-hmm. really shout out to your mom, creating the safe space mm-hmm. for you to have your doubts. Yeah. So now you came at a university and how do you get to mass? Could you just elaborate a bit university and then going to mass? Yeah. Is it the university give you opportunity just so it can be clear well, how you got during, there? During my time as a student, uh, I went uh, on exchange to Belgium. Uh, I did summer school in, in The Hague. So I got a lot of opportunities um, to go abroad and to make friends and to learn about the world outside of Aruba. The new friends, not those. The new friends, yeah, yes, I, I, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but during those experiences, <laughs> I definitely was convinced I want to do my masters. I want to continue. Um, I want to uh, move abroad. Finally, move abroad. Um, um, so it was. Uh, I think in my third year, I made up my mind. Okay, so I'm going to apply, and then slowly you start um, researching about universities and programs and master programs. And uh, the University of Maastricht really um, spoke to me. It's a really amazing city. Um, 15 minutes, you're in Belgium. And another 15 minutes, you're in Germany. So I felt completely international. Um, and it was quite a journey because it, it was a, um, a double master. So I had to apply not only to a UM, so the University of Maastricht, but also to the United Nations University. And that process is a very, ri- yeah. yeah, it's, yeah it's it a re- is. very it hard is. process. And you, I had to start um, really early. Um, uh, so I was busy w- with my thesis and with courses. And I already had to think about my master's and write essays and submit essays and go through that process and when I finally got my acceptance letter it was like ah yeah. I made it yeah. <laughs> so actually you made use of the global opportunity that yes, universal definitely. offers can I just ask one more question before we go to Julia no no oh, oh my god because I'm sorry no viewers, because you are sitting there yeah. she's like well, just you, come back to you, you, you come back to yes, because it's there you go audience, I'm going to where goes. you see <laughs> how it goes to audience, but if, if you just tuned in this is straight up conversation about education a program powered by the University of Aruba where we create a platform to share island stories and also to have different opinions because we are here to learn from each other. So, Juliet, back to you. So, Larry, ask me the same question. <laughs> You're welcome. So Thank you. Great to be here. Let's, I know Great for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You see, that's why we have these yeah. conversations. So, people could know who we are Correct. as universities, but p- uh, persons who are part of the community. So, Juliet, I know maybe for you, your education trajectory went back a bit further in time, but still tell us a bit about that. You know, what was the process in terms of, you know, where you went to school, studied before you ended up? fine you know here at the university of aruba yeah. well as you said it's a long trajectory <laughs> <laughs> quite and a bit older than you uh, but you i say. go back <laughs> and uh, i listen to your story and uh, i try to think of some commonalities mm-hmm. and i have to say that uh, at a very young age i i knew what i wanted to do i, w- I knew what i wow. wanted to study and in my mind it was always i wanted to become an english teacher 
I loved oh. reading. That was one of my pastimes. Okay. I have to say that way back when, <laughs> we had a little library in Wilhelmina Straat. You know, now, now it's the uh, Senso. Ah, yes. yes. That's but what it used to be, yeah, that, that used to be the first more. library. Oh, yes. wow. I didn't and know that. that. The history and of I have to tell you, no AC. So no. Oh, I remember I read almost all the books in that small library. Wow. I just went, because I was very systematic, I would go shelf by, by shelf. shelf. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yes. And actually, that helped me a lot. Um, oh, where did you go to school while you well, were doing um, this reading? I was born in St. Nicholas. So uh, we lived in St. Nicholas until I was about six, and then we came to town. Um, and uh, because my father had a little shop, a little store on the Bernardstraat, okay. and then oh he figured yeah. out, no, if I move to town, it'll be a little bit more productive, Pro successful, you know. And it was. Why. So we moved to Oranjestad, and I went to Rosa, Rosa College, right yeah. here across yes. the street, yeah. you know. And then I went to Maria College, also right, right across the street. the street, yes. And then after that, I went to the Havel. And I did two years there, but all the time I knew that what I wanted to do was get off the island. That, oh that wow. was, uh, yes, that, that was, yeah. And, 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 and I have to say, with a pop lot of... Leven, with a pop leven meegegeven, as you would say in Dutch, that from small, you were taught, you got to leave once no, you're 18, no? No, no? no. That was I wasn't your taught that. Awesome. I wasn't taught that at all. And that's all. a cultural I aspect, I guess, as well. Exactly. The cultural correct. aspect is, actually, preferably from my, my ethnic background, being Chinese, the, the desirable, <laughs> yeah, the desirable Asian, path yeah. would be get your education, not too much, you know, maybe something in business or accounting, and then get into the store and get to work. Ah, you see, I did yeah. not see that as my trajectory okay. because I knew what that kind of life was like, and I really didn't want to be bound to that kind of, you know, six days a week. Uh, no vacation kind of life. Mm -hmm. And actually, my mother told me, you know, the best job you could have is be a teacher because then you can have all the holidays. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's not a reason to become a no. teacher, but, <laughs> but this is how people saw it at that mm -hmm. time. So, but I liked English. I, I loved reading English and it was my, my best, uh, you know, best of luck. And so, um, so that's what I wanted to do. So I, um, I got a bird. I think I got a lance bird. At that time, you would get a lance bird and a lance bird. So I got both. And uh, I went to Holland. And I was on the waiting list because I wasn't accepted, you know, because I guess there were too many students. At that time, you had lots of students and not enough places, right? So I was on the waiting list, number one on the waiting list. So I oh. figured, oh, no problem. So I'll just go. How many were there before you? Because <laughs> I'm thinking back then there was yeah. a waiting list. Yeah, a waiting list. So I think um, it must have been a waiting list of about 10. I was number one, so I figured, okay, well, I'll fly and just go. Well, I didn't get in because after three weeks, wow. it was done. You know, you, you, could, you so can take, um, they, they didn't take students anymore. So, that, so, so, so when you thought it was pressure, that was a different kind That's of a pressure. That's different. Oh, I, I didn't different. even think of that. Yes, wow. yes, yes. So I, I called back, you know, talked to my parents and they said oh no problem just come back and work <laughs> in the shop <laughs> oh and I my. said oh no I don't think so <laughs> so <laughs> I stayed in Holland and I actually got a job working oh wow for a year and then applied again and then by that time they had something called numerous fixes yeah. for yes, the yes, that's what yeah. I did. and yeah. so yeah. I was yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. so there yeah. goes second year so I figured I can't do this you know and luckily, I had a, a, a good friend who was studying in Amsterdam. And she said, well, why don't you? And she was also doing Leerar Opleiding. And she said, well, come over and have an interview with one of the, the, the teachers there. And I did. I got an interview with one of the English teachers. And she was from England. And she said, why are you doing, you know, why do you want to do English in Holland? It doesn't make any sense. Why don't you go to England? Your English is good enough, is better than a fourth year, so why don't you go to England? Ah, and that's how I that ended up in England. Mm -hmm. I did my first degree uh, as an English teacher in England, and, um, and then ended up working. I worked in England, and then I worked in Italy as well as an English teacher. Then now? Th yeah, that was a... That, that, that's, there's a lot of funny stories around that. <laughs> she she just just one. Because she of just course, one. I don't look just British, one. right? <laughs> <laughs> but but I worked in a British school, and back then I had a very British accent, so oh so wow. that was oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, you see how we've learned something. We learned yeah. something new. So do you speak Italian? <laughs> uh, yes, I, I I did a long time ago. A long time so ago. But yeah. 
Wow, very, very interesting. You know, so and then <laughs> because actually your doctor should get you. Ah, uh, yes, yes, that so came along afterwards. So uh, just quickly the trajectory. I um, let's see now. I got hired back in Aruba to teach uh, the English course at the Aruba Trades and Trades and Hospitality Center. That was our first hospitality school here in Aruba, mm-hmm. the Bushiri oh. Hotel oh, yes, School. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so like I taught there for about. Yeah. Two years, and then realized that actually what I wanted to do was maybe teach teachers how to teach English, because they're you know in terms of methodology. So and to make it much more interesting, much more interactive, and so then I applied and went to the states and and got my master's degree in um, at the uh, um, um, South no what university is it called again. Florida State University. Oh, yeah. oh Florida okay. State. Yeah. And, um, and so I did that with the idea of returning to Aruba and hopefully working at the IPA. Uh, well, you know, sometimes there's this song by John Lennon that says, you know, you're busy planning and, you know, life happens. Correct. That, that kind of happened yeah, to me. Yeah, life happens, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got offered uh, um, a PhD. I got offered to do the PhD. I got, you know, asked to enter the program. And so... I got offered an assistantship. I got offered, um, yeah, institution. It wasn't on my radar screen. Um, I, not at all my desire, wish, ambition, nothing like that. It happened. I got offered the opportunity, and so I took it. And so that started my trajectory of doing a PhD program in international development education. And my mm-hmm. colleagues who graduated with me, they end up in you know, bilateral, multilateral organizations, you know, UNESCO, UNICEF, yeah. USAID, you know, or in educational planning units okay. in ministries of education. And um, so that was that trajectory, and I ended up working in a policy institute. And then, as fate would have it, I was asked to return to Aruba to do some work. Um, again, way back when. <laughs> And I, did I like that. how you say that. So, <laughs> so yeah. and, wow. and, you, and you were living in Asia, somewhere in Asia for <laughs> some period. How I always associated that with your PhD, or that was for different. Oh, oh, no, that was later. Let's see now. Uh, because of the years, I've got a bit of a trajectory. So, <laughs> 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 so, so I, I, I was invited to come back here, and so I worked with the Aruba Quality Foundation, and oh, was yeah. part of that, that Mises, whole yeah. initial movement of um, of um, educating and preparing. You know this whole quality um, award system, and um, uh, helping organizations to, you know, really look at quality, quality mm-hmm. of service, quality of processes as a way, uh, as a way of business, mm-hmm. and um, and so that that was a few years that I was I was here, maybe about seven years, and then I I left, uh, and re- and returned to the states, and from there uh, we uh, we went to China. So I lived in China for uh, about a year and a half. This is like, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I lived there about for about a year and a half. And then from China, I was asked to return here to help with um, uh, creating the national education plan. So I did that from China. And that was quite interesting, traveling up and down. Um, but, w- yeah, we were able to do that. Wow. And, and that was also the first national education plan of Aruba. So you see, it's not only her wow. educational trajectory, yes. also her professional <laughs> trajectory. Yes. And, and, sh- and actually, not even really thinking of something, and sometimes I guess just being open to the universe exactly. and see what yes. comes your way. Yes, yes, that's an, that's exactly the way I would put it, because, you know, the, 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 the phrase by John Lennon, you know, you're busy planning, and then life, life happens. happens. Mm-hmm. I would so describe beautiful. my life like that. Uh, many of the things that I ended up doing, I actually did not plan. The PhD ah. is one of them. When I look at the uh-huh. younger people today, I'm amazed by their goal-oriented um, choices. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, I've heard some of them say, yes, I'll go for my bachelor and then my master's and then my PhD just in one breath. And uh, to me, that's pretty amazing. Um, but it's, it's, it's good. It's just amazing because I think back and, oh, wow, I didn't do that like that at all. Things but I also think with, with, with a PhD or a master, sometimes just taking that break to figure out who I am, what I want, and yeah. you know, Absolutely. and then also when, by the time you go for the master's or the PhD, it's even more um, doolgericht. Yeah, and you own it more. Goal-oriented. And also, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it maybe it fits more with who you are. That's what and I experienced, yeah. and I've said in the, in the show in the past, when I got my master's at a later age, um, 
I had already defined who I was and the masters did not define me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just was a confirmation of something you had mm-hmm. in you. While you see some people, the masters defines who they are because mm-hmm. they think, well, this paper says I am qualified, whether mm-hmm. you had all fives or six, you yeah. know, it doesn't matter it's who I am. And I based on this, mm-hmm. this is my value. Um, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And for me, it was I had already proven what I could, uh, what I was of added value, but that's how I look at it. But yeah, but yeah. thank you very much for sharing that, uh, Deborah. Because I think uh, your listeners and viewers, if you just tuned in, this is straight a conversation yeah. about education program powered by the University of Aruba, sharing island stories. Because I think it's very much so that if we stop and think and know who we're, you know, the persons who's sitting on the other side, we get to understand them better because everybody would hear them say, you're yeah. so lucky you got that opportunity. And mm-hmm. in your case, life happens. In your case, you work for you it. For <laughs> right. You worked very hard life for it. Happening. And you had to do some sacrifice, you know. Yeah. Before we would go into the theme on, you know, because we have a program, a well-being program at the university, mm-hmm. you know, the, the link of culture mm-hmm. and well-being. As a parent, Juliet, because mm-hmm. your child went on to study as well. How did you experience it? Because I talked a bit about Thais' mom, but she's not here, but you as a parent, because I think it's also very difficult. We kind of overlook that part. How do you, you experience of having your child making choices and going abroad, just for all those parents who are logged into our uh, radio program or podcast? My daughter was in a similar situation as um, Thais. Thais. Yes, at the age of 17-ish, you know, she really didn't know what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, She really didn't have a clue. And so um, I helped her to Mm -hmm. pick out a a place of study. And I also helped her pick out a a course of study that would be as open as possible for her so that she could then choose uh, a direction. And um, that was uh, liberal studies, liberal arts studies, because I thought, well, that mm-hmm. would give her a broad basis for them to be able to choose. But, you know, it's interesting. As a parent, you might, you might think what is best for your child, and you, you oh. act on that too. But then experience will tell you that it's not necessarily so. So with all my educational baggage, you know, <laughs> I thought that I was doing a good thing. Well, actually, it didn't work out that way because it was not what she was interested in at all. Well, obviously, she didn't know that starting off. Yeah. But mm-hmm. like you, going through it, she figured out, I don't like, like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm very unhappy. Mm-hmm. And so, um, luckily, at the end of that, she was able to say, you know, I, I, I don't like this, but I can say what I do like. And because she was able to then say, I like teamwork. I like hands-on problem solving. I do not awesome. like academic writing and reading just for the sake of academic reading and writing. Um, I like practical things. We were able to choose something for her that would fit these, you know, discovered, um, you know, tendencies. And what did she choose at the uh, end? She chose um, creative advertising. Wow. And oh, that wow. is something that <laughs> I mean, it, was n- it would never have been on my radar screen. <laughs> I never <laughs> even know that exists. Oh, wow. So, but it was part of the whole menu of courses that were being offered, mm-hmm. and she chose creative advertising, and she now works in an advertising agency. Wow! If yeah. I may, what would you, what would your word of advice, or what would you say to parents? Because we do want to go to show mm-hmm. wellness, mm-hmm. and we do want to go to mm-hmm. culture. What would you say? Because you know, I know for parents, this is as difficult as it is for the youngster. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. would you tell the parents mm-hmm. listening in today? Well, you know, if I had to do this all over again, I would probably uh, consult somebody who would do one of those questionnaires Mm -hmm. on what are your strengths and what are your gifts and Mm -hmm. what are you interested in and probably do that kind of, um, uh, yeah, uh, analysis, Mm -hmm. you know, and... I think you can get that with a psychologist or do that with yeah. a psychologist. Yes. Even and online, you have many of those. Or right. Yeah. 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 We yeah. also have at the Academic Foundation mm-hmm. year. That is where our yeah. colleague, Kevin Richardson, really guides uh, students. You know, they're not sure. You get, you know, the research techniques. Yeah. You get a skill training. But you also get a lot about personal development. What do you want? Mm-hmm. And who are you? So, you know, for those listening, if you're not sure, we invite you to, you know, just log on at the University of Aruba surf our website, learn a bit more about the academic uh, um, foundation, foundation yeah. year, or send us an email at osa at uapintawe, and then we can answer our questions or you can come by. So And don't forget, our website is www.ua.aw. Yes. And you know, we have everything online now, so you can sign up mm-hmm. as of May 15th. So, you know, 
even if you're not sure, sign up and just come in, ask questions, our door open. Yeah. So, so Deborah, it brings us now to culture and well-being. I understood the university has a program on Shoko Wellness. Shoko like Wellness. And, and when uh, Thais was saying student crisis, I thought, you know, Juliette, that's, I don't <laughs> say that's what mm -hmm. your Shoko Wellness is dealing with, but it's mm -hmm. an aspect that plays a role in the student's life because they see it as crisis and I know Thaisa background is culture and I mm -hmm. we definitely believe that our culture plays a very important way in how we experience crisis but also how, yes, we, how deal we deal with, with crisis yes, so correct. let's continue with Juliette on the program Shoko Wellness yeah. because then we can understand where because Thais is an advocate of uh, yes, culture and culture creativity for all go culture Just listeners us, are there yeah in short the program Shoko Wellness at the University of Aruba, because that's something you established yeah, recently as well. Yes, start yes. by the name, Shoko Wellness, and then explain what yes, it does. Yes, yeah. that's right. Shoko Wellness is a program um, that offers services that help students to succeed in the university. Of course, the programs that the students enroll in are the discipline that they will be um, trained in, educated in. But Shoko Wellness offers uh, the ability to help students outside of the program to really um, deal with issues that might be difficult, might cause some mm -hmm. unbalance in their, you know, the way they see things. Mm -hmm. And so our services entail things like uh, awareness, uh, online workshops, uh, early intervention, prevention workshops, all information to help students to cope with life as a student in the university because in a university, performance is very important mm -hmm. and it means constant performance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're done with one uh, uh, assignment and lo and behold, you got a next one coming up. Yep. Sometimes you may even have four deadlines falling in the same week. So the, 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 the anxiety, the stress that comes with having to perform at a high level, you know, can cause, uh, you know, um, setbacks for students and so it's not unusual for students to become very anxious maybe and it might show up physically as not being able to sleep perhaps or not being able to eat uh, getting very irritable very nervous uh, all these are very normal mm -hmm. signs of a body of a person who is stressed out mm -hmm. so what Shoko Wellness offers are you know the services to help them you know, to A, recognize it, uh, to be able to prevent it, uh, to be able to deal with it very early on. But sometimes it can be that, you know, the university is a combination also with personal circumstances and it might be, you know, taking too long. I mean, if, if you don't sleep for maybe a few days, okay, you can deal with that. But if you are not able to sleep well for weeks on end, it will have its effect on your ability to think, your ability to, to, to read, to study, yeah. to write, and eventually affect your performance. And so as Shoko Wellness, what we want to do is we want to help students not get to that point. Mm -hmm. And so we have a network of psychologists and coaches that students can apply for, and they will get sessions to help them. And we have a lot of students that uh, take advantage of these um, counseling and coaching counseling sessions, which are for free. Um, and, um, and it really helps them because as a young person, uh, very often uh, you don't quite understand yourself mm -hmm. and yeah. you kind of think, oh, I'm the only one who's no. you know, dealing, dealing with, with this. this. I'm the yeah. only one. But if you were to know that this is a very common and a very yeah. normal way for the brain to react to stress, Correct. then you can reach out and you can ask for help. And I, so and I would just like to add for yeah. um, students listening in, it's not only your student days that this happens, this continues throughout your life because yes. we're all faced with deadlines, you know, exactly. and they all give stress and we have stressful periods, less stressful yes. periods, and we, we, we have to deal with it. Balance. And sometimes yes. you might think we're a bit wiser, we know we can breathe, count till 10, but sometimes even we forget to do that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we can and just say that stress is part of human life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, and, and the brain reacts in you know, very predetermined ways to stress. I mean, it's either fight, flight, or mm -hmm. freeze. freeze. And right. none of these three are really helpful. Mm -hmm. And yes. so Shoko Wellness helps students, gives them the tools, the information, mm -hmm. the strategies to be able to go beyond fight, mm -hmm. flight, and but freeze. Thais, you know, they would say that health is greatly influenced by complex factors such as where we live and the strength of our families and communities. Now, 
how how is it with the culture and what you've experienced yourself going abroad, mm-hmm. coming back? What could you tell us a bit, and then we will make the link to well being. Yeah, and I, uh, it's it's very, it's very interesting because I think for many of us on the island, uh, we are kind of programmed to think that we have to go abroad. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost innate. It's just it's just so automatic that our next step after high school is just the Netherlands. That's it. Um, and I think for me, it created a, a very interesting dynamic where I had to kind of, I was forced to kind of evaluate who I am and what do I want and what, how has my upbringing impacted the way I see the world. Mm-hmm. When I traveled, how has my upbringing uh, impacted the way I see other people and, and other cultures and the way that I make friends, the way that I immerse myself in that community, right? So... When I went on exchange or even in summer school, I there was a huge culture shock for me. Um, I met people from all over the world, China, Korea, the States, G- um, Greenland, Switzerland, from all over, South America. Um, uh, so it, how do you go about um, talking to people that speak different languages and eat different foods and have different religions and have the um, uh, various uh, value sets and um, it, it was hard for me because I, I don't think we prepare oh. um, our young people for that enough um, because oh. even though that I stayed here and even though that uh, I started my journey here um, it was still kind of difficult to kind of um, navigate that territory or new territory at least and uh, on one side I'm thinking I understand. Mm-hmm. And once I'm like, yeah, but we know Ruba Taka, we're so multicultural. You know, we're we open always to say that. All the cultures, but I don't there, how many right, new cultures right. living here, and we have so many people no, to deal I with. I think it's an assumption that we have. Because mm-hmm. the same thing that we say, we speak four languages, but I can count on my hands how many people really can speak fluently in four languages. So we kind of boast and brag about certain stereotypes that, okay, we speak four languages, we're m- multicultural, right. but. The way we um, live is not always multicultural because we kind of stick to our own. And and in my case, I'm I'm very fortunate that uh, um, in my environment I was very um, exposed to different um, groups of people. Um, um, my parents are are I wouldn't say interracial, but my mother has a Surinamese background and my mm-hmm. father a more local or Ruben uh, background. But I spoke Dutch and Papiamento at home. I ate Surinamese food um, mm-hmm. and more Aruban types of food. So I was already um, used to that in my household. But still, when you move away from home and you have to kind of learn about new cultures and some things that other people might find normal for you it's like oh this is something new i don't know what they're talking about or i don't know this lingo or this um, (laughs) joke or this internal joke Um, but it was it it was very hard but because of those experiences i I think i am now more able to connect with colleagues internationally and and have those international friendships so if i may ask i know you're going to ask a question too um what would you do differently? So now you are, you know, Thais is not only an alumni, but she's also one of our lecturers at the University of Urban the OGM program and also in mm-hmm. other programs. What do you do different if you look back on how the lecturers then or what you've been taught and how do you do that? What do you do differently and what would you like to um, share with our listeners and viewers on that aspect? Because... I know I learned much more from my culture when I was abroad mm-hmm. than when I was living in Aruba. I think I, 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 uh, I do integrate culture in my assignments and in the projects that I um, give my students. I allow them to specifically work in groups of people with different cultures because many mm-hmm. times you see that students kind of s- stick to the people that they know yeah. and they're afraid, Bolero. even on Aruba, yeah. right? They're yeah, afraid right. to kind of immerse themselves with, with other students of other backgrounds or even other faculty students, right? So they always stay together. And in my assignments, in-class assignments, projects, um, I always kind of force um, students, true. encourage students to kind of meet new students and work with other people that maybe have a, 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 a 
another set of values or yeah. background or culture right um, yeah. so that I is very important and i also stress about you know take those opportunities that the ua gives you right go on exchange yeah. go and explore um because those opportunities are going to shape yeah. the rest of your life you know i Demo. i enjoyed when, when i did my bachelor's being mm -hmm. able to go abroad a year and a half yeah. um It taught me so much about mm -hmm. who I am, about other people. And I was thinking on a conversation I had to do with a student who just returned from Holland with uh, a master's from Erasmus. And he was very successful, completed. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, but I stuck to the international school um, students because we knew they had a drive, yes. you know? Yes. And yes. I didn't go yes. with yes. The, the, the Dutch because, yes. you know, they were a bit happy with the six. And I said, well, these are all stereotypes and biases exactly. that we also right. have about each other. Mm -hmm. And... Um, It's important in our student years to really just go through every learning experience, every project, mm -hmm. every group, and learn because not everyone is the same. And you miss mm -hmm. out on connecting with people and mm -hmm. learning from them um, mm -hmm. as well. So that yeah. was something that I found yeah. interested. But let's bump up Eriba Cultura because Ooh. that's... Ooh. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Shout out to Amy, Amy Richards, also, also alumni, alumni yes. of the university and also yeah. very active mm -hmm. with Thais on uh, Go Culture. So the floor is yours. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I graduated from the OGM, I, my, my thesis was, uh, was about the... the the CCI, so the, the creative industries. Um, I come from a very musical family. Um, uh, some of my family members are superstars, <laughs> 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 to say the least. Um, but I, I saw um, the lack of vision that we have as an island on, 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 on creativity in general, and that it's an asset, it's a value, it's an economic value. And I think for generations, we've been talking about diversifying, diversifying, mm -hmm. diversifying. And as a young student, I was like, okay, how can I combine my OGM values with mm -hmm. passion and a gap that I see in society? And then I did my thesis on um, the impact of the creative industries on Aruba. So I kind of did an exploratory research about the possible impact that this could have in our society and in, in our economy. And without knowing, I kind of became the poster child for creative industries on Aruba. Um, <laughs> everyone wanted me to write articles and um, do presentations and talk about culture and, and, and creative industries. Um, so when I went to Maastricht, I was approached by a local newspaper um, and they asked me to write a column um, about my thesis, but in like normal terms so that even my grandmother could understand what my thesis was about. So I started writing about culture, sustainability and, 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 and those kinds of topics. And when I came back to Aruba, um, uh, I also published a version of my thesis in a book. And this was the um, shared with uh, NGOs and stakeholders in um, this specific industry. And then I was approached by Google Tura and uh, they asked me, okay, but Thais, um, let's talk about culture. Yes, let's talk yes. about the issues. Let's talk about your experiences and maybe experiences of um, these creative people in Aruba and uh, the, the challenges, but also the the options that we have as a small island. Right. If I may mm -hmm. interject, because I want to bring the link just now to mm -hmm. the well-being, but what are what are the biggest challenges, babe? Because we always hear from, you know, it's the language issue, is not knowing who, who we are, where we come from, being proud mm -hmm. as in Ruben. What would you say in the research that you did, but also in the program, because you had different guests on your program? Yeah, and we had a minister <laughs> of creative economy. <laughs> we yeah. had local artists. Yeah, so we what, had, what yeah. is the biggest challenge you see now that our youngsters face? I think um, there's a clear gap in understanding and accepting what culture uh, brings to the table. And because I think um, the older generations, and I'm thinking not only my mom's generation, but even uh -huh. older, culture was not really important. Um, culture was only viewed as a, yeah, a creative outlet hobby kind of a thing. You know, it wasn't mm. really seen. It wasn't valued. It wasn't such. valued. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't hear someone encouraging their child to become a singer or yeah, like uh, an artist. Money, so why would yes, you? Yes, exactly. That's so the, that's a concern. the focus was also it was always become a lawyer, become a doctor, mm. and those kinds of old um, professions. Yeah, professions, yeah. but 
the left side of our brain was always just ignored. And um, I think it's a big disservice for a lot of uh, people that are really gifted in those areas and are gifted in being more creative and, and more artistic. Um, and the future is innovation. The future is artistic. The future is creation, is technology. Is, is That's all left side of the brain, right? So um, that's, I think... Uh, one of the what main is? gaps that we have on the island that we're still at a place where we don't see the importance or we don't acknowledge um, the value that it could have in our society and not only in bringing um, uh, not only have an, an economic value but also um, how it impacts the community and social cohesion that we have as a society and you know but also thinking um, culture in being open. Because mm -hmm. we also, an aspect of our culture, as you said, we don't value, um, there's certain aspects we don't value, mm -hmm. but there's also some things we don't know how to deal with, mm -hmm. to discuss. Mm -hmm. And that's where you were saying the flight freeze, or um, what was the last one? Flight 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 flight? Yeah, yeah, the three Fs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we, I think that affects our, our well-being as well. Yeah. Maybe yeah. yeah, connecting yeah, with that creative, but connecting also with within. We are. In your program, um, it was... Um, um. Yeah, I think I think what um, you know Thais says is is very important. You know, it makes me think about culture and actually creative expression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And creative expression comes from the very heart and mm -hmm. soul Correct. of one's being. Mm -hmm. And our educational system overemphasizes mm -hmm. uh, the left brain development, mm -hmm. so linguistic capacities, mm -hmm. analytic capacities. Mm -hmm. And we think that our brain is only the left side, mm -hmm. but our brain is both. Mm -hmm. right. And I think that as a human being. You know, I mean, at this age now, I would say, you know, the, the know goal really more. is yeah. to become yeah. as balanced. best yeah. and as balanced a human being as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And education is one part of it, because I see education as an instrument mm -hmm. for development, but the other is creative expression. Exactly. And I think that's extremely important. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a saying, I don't know anymore where I, where I heard it, but the saying is that you can tell the maturity of a civilization by the by expression of their culture. Exactly. So yeah. you look at their, their musical expression, mm -hmm, their, their artistic yeah. expression, you mm -hmm. know, and you can tell the maturity of a mm -hmm. civilization. And when you look at Southeast Asia, you look at China, you look at India, you know, and you look at actually also ancient cultures, mm -hmm. and you look at the artistic works mm -hmm. that they produce, yes. You can mm. really, you know, oh you can wow. really feel that this is a deep, deep culture. Oh and yeah. what, what do I mean when I say deep? It really means that they have a very strong connection to their soul, to mm -hmm. their heart. Correct. Exactly. And, and when we talk about person. wellness and yeah. well-being, to me, well-being is really, are you, are you connected? You yeah. know? Are you grounded? Are you grounded? Inner, are yes. you centered? Mm -hmm. Are yes. you in your heart? Mm -hmm. uh, also in your brain, obviously, mm -hmm. but are you in your heart? Because exactly. so often what happens is that we're in our head. Mm -hmm. you know, Correct. And, and, there and, is and the you can see it in, yeah. in the body posture. You can see it in behavior, you know. I mean, there. I, I, I used to be a person that when I walked, my, my upper body was leaning forward mm -hmm. because I was, I was more mm. heading towards something <laughs> rather than being in my body. And so mm -hmm. I think that culture is also about, is another concept, is about embodiment mm -hmm. and the embodiment of your, of your heart and your mm -hmm. soul. Yeah. And for peoples, it is really can we embody the, 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 the vision of our people, mm -hmm. the wishes, the dreams mm -hmm. of our people. Yeah. Yes, oh. and, be and, so and before I think the work you do yes. is very important. Yeah. yeah, and you know when we're combining it because I know the time. It's time. Almost time. This conversation just flew by. <laughs> yes, we one just started. Things, <laughs> yes, one of the things that one of the, as we were prepping and you know we were looking at a few TED talks, and you would hear um, people from Afghan, but also you know you know the war that's going on right now in Ukraine. This gentleman said he said what kept him grounded during the very part in the Afghan war was that he said he remembered the, the lullaby from his mom mm. and that sound was what he said in his culture singing of the mothers putting chanting, their kids yeah. right yeah. the chanting mm -hmm. putting the kids to bed became a mantra and he said although he had you know about four or five months mm -hmm that you know he wouldn't wish anyone sleeping on the floor not knowing what's going to happen being afraid of the nightfall that we can see right now in other places you know 
uh, we just hope it's over, that you'll notice that if it's part of the culture, for example, having that lullaby, putting your kids to bed, it is important because mm -hmm. when the kids, you see it, when the kids is upset or anything's going to happen, they're going to go back to yeah. what gives them comfort. If I give yeah. my example of my son, when he starts to swim again, I know, okay, he's trying to get centered mm -hmm. because yeah. it gives him the calm because that is mm -hmm. what gave him calm before. So mm -hmm. when we started out this program on mixing culture with well-being, mm -hmm. then, you know, Trila, we're all in higher education. What would you like to see in terms of higher education and bringing in the culture and well-being for all our students mm -hmm. in Aruba? So, you know, we're not talking just mm. only like like a university, <laughs> but we're looking, you know, it's I know. Like it's <laughs> right there. It's a complicated <laughs> question. <Yes. laughs> Well, I think a university is an institute of higher learning. Mm -hmm. And so you can expect that when you go into university that you would be, um, you know, learning, um, working with um, knowledge at a deeper, broader level. So that's a given. Yeah? So there is a, a higher level left brain training, mm -hmm. you know, sharpening your analytical skills, gaining knowledge about a particular subject, deepening into it, uh, learning how to investigate and, 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 and broaden our understanding of things. So you expect that. However, I do think that um, the right side of the brain is also important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am very happy that the University of Aruba has Shoko Wellness because mm -hmm. it offers then the other the other half side, mm -hmm. if you will. And so in Shoko Wellness, we offer things like mindfulness, um, mm -hmm. uh, mindfulness meditations mm -hmm. uh, to actually help uh, the left brain move away from fight, flight, and freeze yep. because the stress will remain. And I think it's very important for uh, yeah. students in higher education, but everybody, like Deborah everybody, says, everybody yeah. to really be able to... Uh, understand how yeah. the, how the body operates and yeah. tap into uh, tools that you know come natural to us, like yeah. sit still and breathe and not do anything. Exactly. But it comes yeah. natural to us. I, I do think that it, it is a challenge for us in the culture that we are that, that we are raised in or that we have on the island. That uh, it, and I think this is also with my experience being a teacher now that I see students that need the help and the need with. Yeah. They are so afraid to accept that they need help, and what will uh, what will my peers think if mm -hmm. I need to go to a coach or to a psychologist? Like that um, stigma is yeah. very heavy still in, in our culture, uh, where you have maybe um, grandparents or parents that uh, don't want to accept that their child might need um, a coach or a psychologist, or might need some more attention to give them more tools to kind of deal with the anxiety, like. I, like, no one really, um, uh, we, we never used to talk about anxiety and, yeah. and being afraid. And now with, yeah, I, I think during COVID, I think that it really came, it really came out. Yeah. And, and we had to deal with it. And we, we had, had to start talking yes. about it. And, and even at the university, I think we had to start talking about Deborah, what these things yes. could have. Uh, it, it's almost yeah. another topic, but I but know it's almost to time. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 We passed the time oh already. It's time goodness. to go. Oh my goodness, for our viewers and listeners, thank you we so much. We have to do a part two. Yes, part two. <laughs> we need to go back to the part two. This is straight up a conversation about education, a program powered by the University of, mm -hmm. of Aruba, and we had today Thais Franken and Ms. Juliet Chu. Colleagues of us at the University yes. of Aruba, we really thank got to know a bit more about them. And about culture and well-being. And about culture. I just have yeah. one quick question that I normally ask our audience. I know you speak Italian. I know you love, uh, you know, reading English books. But tell us something, a little but secret really, that really no one yeah. would know about you. That, really you know, your quick, friends yeah. would say, this is so typical of Juliet. Or Thais and about you. So yeah, what would your friends say? You, whoever. <laughs> what would your friends just say about really you? Quick. Just in one word. One, describe yourself. Yeah. Something. She likes to bake. She likes to knit. Something that, you know, we can go around at, with funny, at the University of Aruba and say. She's funny. Oh, I like to sing. Oh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> you see, oh, that was a secret. This is, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Yeah, yeah so that's for uh, karaoke or something. <laughs> <laughs> and that's for you. Oh, why would my friends say... Uh, I think I'm. I'm very Amy, loyal. Are you listening? What yes, would you say? I'm, 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 I'm very loyal, and yeah. I love to dance, artistic. I love to write. I love to cook. Okay. I took up gardening during COVID, nice. but now I don't have time to garden. Is it an invitation? <laughs> 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 yeah, but yes. anyhow, I would thank like to thank our viewers, your audience, you. our yeah. guests. This thank is you a straight up conversation about education. University, where we're creating a platform where we can learn about each other, mm -hmm. about island stories, so we can empower each other and learn more and all become life. 
lifelong learner. Yeah, that's important. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Thank Deborah. You. you know, she said, a lifelong learners. That's exactly. I think I think throughout yeah. life we yes. have to continue learning, and not mm-hmm. because we finish the university. Oh, that's where we stop. That's where we actually Look begin there in there every go. aspect of life. So I would like to say, everyone, you know, tune in next week again, same yeah. time, same place here at Soppy Mix, and where we'll have other interesting guests. And if you know you have any questions, remark, or you would like to be part of the show, do send us an email at CLL at you up and away or, or at just Osa. put it in the comments put it in the comments, in the yes. comments. we're on all social media platforms so we're here to serve you and be part of the community yes definitely yes. so thank you guest and till next week bye thank you bye <laughs> yo uh, you don't know we're going global with this thing <laughs> <laughs>